Gill is the name of Deputy Charlie McConlogue uh, regarding the need for additional funding at Letterkenny University Hospital. Deputy McConlogue has four minutes. Thank you, Concorla. And um, I hope coming out of this debate today, Minister, that we can receive clarity in relation to when there will be approval forthcoming to Letterkenny University Hospital to provide the funding for staff, for nurses and support staff to enable the opening of the 20-bed short-stay ward as an addition to the hospital. At the moment, the, uh, the, 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 the short-stay ward minister is being used temporarily for rehab patients as there is uh, there's refurbishment going on in the rehab unit in St Connell's Hospital and temporarily the short-stay ward is being used to actually uh, 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 provide uh, patient facilities for those in the rehab service. The short-stay ward previously was operating as a, a full ward of the hospital uh, pending the reopening of the uh, haematology oncology ward in which there was 11 beds and also the coronary care unit which had eight beds. Those two wards uh, opened in the summer following on from the flooding minister and the beds which were in the short stay ward transferred uh, and the staff from the short stay ward transferred to those two newly opened wards, meaning the short stay ward was vacant. And uh, since then, um, it has had and currently it now has the rehab patients temporarily. Those rehab patients are due to return to St Connell's by the end of December, meaning the ward will once again be vacant and available for use. But of course, to bring the short stay ward into use and to provide the 20 beds in it requires staffing. And back in June of this summer, Minister, uh, the hospital management in Letterkenny put in a request to the HSE for approval for the staff required to open the short stay ward and to provide those additional 20 beds for the hospital. It would, if opened, uh, enhance the hospital's capacity from 330 patients at the moment to 350 patients. To bring that about, the funding of 1.8 million was requested so that 17 additional nurses could be hired, four, um, four health care assistants could be hired, or sorry, six health care assistants, and four additional staff minister. Back in June, that was requested. As you know, and working as a minister in the Department of Health, it takes time to put staff in place. Once approval is required, it takes weeks and into months to actually get them into, into the situation where those beds can be reopened. Um, normally, you'd be looking for at least four months for that minister. But as of yet, Letterkenny Hospital still does not have approval from the HSE, nor indeed from, particularly from yourselves as the government and the ministers responsible for providing that funding to the HSE to enable that to happen. As a result of that, today we have 23, 23 uh, patients, for example, waiting on trolleys for admission into Letterkenny Hospital today. Yesterday it was 25. Over the course of the last year, Minister, since January this year, we have had 4,000 patients in Letterkenny Hospital waiting on trolleys for access to a hospital bed. That's admitted by the A&E consultant, but no bed available. On 4,000 occasions so far this year, that has happened. That's an increase from 2016, when there was just over 1,200 patients waiting on trolleys. That's nearly a two and a half times increase between 2016 and 2017. The assessment by the hospital shows that on average we're talking about around 20 beds additional being required. The proposal put forward would deal with that and would provide those additional 20 beds, but only if the government can get its act together and provide the funding that's required. Why, Minister, have you sat on this for the last number of months? Why, even if the funding is given now, do we have to wait a further period of time because of the inaction on behalf of the government in terms of providing this approval? And can you today tell us that that funding will be immediately provided and every effort made to ensure Minister, that post-Christmas, Minister, those additional Minister, 20 beds can be available in Letterkenny University Hospital for Donegal Can patients. I make the hack to Ministers, four minutes. Yeah. Uh, last Karen Corla. First of all, I want to thank uh, Deputy Charlie McConnell for raising this very, very important issue. But firstly, can I say that I'm delighted, as part of the Budget 2018 announcements, 40 million in additional funding was provided for winter pressures in 2017, and a further 90 million 
for measures to improve access to scheduled and unscheduled care in 2018. So we're planning for these particular issues. This is a signal of a commitment of this government to investing in our health hospital services, to provide additional support during the winter period, and to increase hospital capacity and reduce waiting times for hospital procedures. Regarding the additional uh, funding for winter, winter preparedness, this will be allocated to a range of measures. I can confirm that a total of 5 million of this funding for 2017 will be focused on supporting patients to return home or an appropriate community setting where, cl where, where clinically appropriate, by providing 45 additional home care packages and 20 additional transitional care beds per week over the winter period. These measures have already been rolled out to targeted hospitals nationally, thus helping to alleviate some of the pressure on our hospitals that our hospitals are currently experiencing. Funding will also be provided to increase bed capacity this winter and moving forward as part of service planning for 2018. The Department of Health is also undertaking a health service capacity review in line with the, with the programme for a partnership government commitment the findings of which are due to be published before the end of this year, which will provide an evidence base for future capacity. In addition, I can confirm to the Deputy that all hospital groups and community health organisations have developed and put in place integrated winter pre pre preparedness plans for their locality, focus on for, uh, planning for periods of escalation, maintaining patient flow processes and ensuring public health preparedness. Now let me return to the question raised in relation to Letterkenny University Hospital. I am aware that a proposal for additional beds in Letterkenny has been submitted to the HSE by the Celta Hospital Group. This proposal will be assessed by the HSE in line with current financial and procurement processes and a decision made thereafter. In general, there is no doubt that too many patients continue to wait on trolleys for admission to a hospital on a daily basis within our health service. I wish to acknowledge the distress that long wait times in EDs cause for patients and their families, including Letterkenny. The public hospital system is seeing growing demand for care and Letterkenny follows this trend. This year, ED attendances at Letterkenny are up over 1% by the end of September, including an almost 5% increase in ED attendances by people over 75 years of age. Notwithstanding the pressure on Letterkenny ED, it is worth noting that patient experience times in Letterkenny are above the national average, meaning that patients complete their, uh, their episode of care more qu quickly in Letterkenny ED. And I want to thank and compliment the staff for that. Let me conclude, Deputy, by noting the commitment of this Government to develop and improve services at Letterkenny University Hospital, evidenced by the significant level of investment in capital projects in recent years. These developments include a multiple remedial works following the flooding in 2013, a new state-of-the-art blood science laboratory in 2015, and a new medical academy and a clinical skills lab opened last year. Thank you. Colin Logue, Colin Logue two minutes. Uh, thank you, Concorla, um, and thanks for your response, Minister. Um, but I have to say it uh, beggars belief um, and is absolutely unacceptable. Um, first of all, Minister, can I acknowledge and emphasise the tremendous work that the, the staff and at Kenny Hospital are, 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 are performing on a daily basis and the tremendous work they carry out there? Um, but it is absolutely unfair that that work and effort, Minister, is dealt with and supported in the way that you have here in the Dáil, with absolute, um, an absolute failure to get to grips with your responsibility to, uh, and the Government's responsibility to ensure that the planning and backup is in place to ensure that they can actually do the job which uh, they uh, absolutely do their best to do on, on a daily basis. You, told, you started off in your response by telling us that you were delighted that there was €40 million Euro available to help ease pressures in the hospital. A couple of other comments you made, Minister. You then went on to say that um, uh, you're aware, that, you're aware that, the, that a proposal for additional beds in Letterkenny had been submitted to the HSE. 
um, and this proposal will be assessed by the HSE in line with current financial and procurement processes uh, and a decision made thereafter. Minister, the HSE and the Government has this proposal since last June. We are in the middle of the winter now and you are telling us it is going to be assessed and considered with due process. You then go on to tell us, I wish to acknowledge the distress, the long wait times in AD and emergency departments cause for patients. Well, Minister, we do not want you here in the doll just to tell us you acknowledge people's distress. We want the government to deal with it and to try and ensure that they are not distressed. Now, the hospital put forward a clear proposal to provide 20 additional beds which would greatly help deal with the overcrowding and with the problem with people waiting on trolleys every day for admission. Fortunately, post-Christmas, when the rehab patients return to St Connells, there will be the space, the physical space in the hospital to provide those 20 beds. Not every other hospital in the country has that capacity. Minister. Fortunately, Letterkenny, we will have it. But the government can't get its act together to, after six months, to provide the funding that's required to prepare and put the staff in place so that those beds can be reopened and available after Christmas. It's totally unacceptable, Minister. And can I say to you and Minister Harris coming out of here today, can you go back and look at how you have failed in relation to this very viable proposal? And can you immediately get an answer that will ensure Deputy. that come the new year we can have these 20 over. additional beds yeah. in Letterkenny and we can, do, we can deal with the situation Deputy whereby people Minister. hopefully will not have to continue to experience a uh, trolley at a situation where they're in trolleys Deputy and where this Deputy government Deputy. continues to fail them. I Minister. It's a very important Thank you, Concorda. But it's a minute over and we can't do yeah. that. Thank you, Last Concorda. Can I just say that, um, of course, I'll bring uh, your strong message back to Minister Simon Harris in relation to Letterkenny Hospital. But can I also agree with you in relation to uh, and compliment the staff because you have seen there in my response that the patient experience is above the national average. In other words, there are a lot of examples of good practice there. But it would be misleading to say that nothing is happening. There is an awful lot happening. And I, I just, I'm just looking at a list of projects underway and planned include a CCU, uh, haematology, oncology ward, restoration upgrade, radi radiology and inter interventional uh, suite restoration upgrade, mortuary restoration upgrade, boiler house and maintenance, uh, underground service duct, details uh, design stage, physiotherapy and occultation departments, restoration upgrade. These are, and additional projects are planned and include the restoration upgrade work. So there is work going on, so it's misleading. But on the issue of the uh, people on trolleys, of course it's unacceptable to have people on trolleys. And that will be focus of our, of our, of our extra spending in 2018. There's 90 million extra being provided to deal with these particular issues. And can I say that I will bring back your concerns to Minister Harris in relation to the, to the, the, the 20 beds and also your, your point about the 1.8 million and what's happening behind the scenes. But I'll give you a commitment that I'll do my best to push this issue, but also to acknowledge that a lot of work has gone on and we continue to do that work.